Okay, so today I will show you how to show an image on the display in less than 10 seconds. And all you need is this Pixel.js board, but I will talk about it in a minute. All right, now let's display the image. For that, let's open the Esperino IDE and create a new sketch using the Blockly. Open the graphics menu and dragging the image as well as updating the screen. And as for the actual image, let's select for example this one. Set the position to 0, 0 and then connect it to the board using the web Bluetooth and it's this Pixel.js, so I'll pair it. Click the upload to RAM button and we can see the image on the display itself. And yes, that was probably more than 10 seconds, probably something like 20, but it's still a fast way how to display the image on the display, probably the fastest that I found so far. And that's of course thanks to this board, which is called Pixel.js, JS meaning that it could be programmed in JavaScript or as we have just seen using the logic blocks. It has this big 128 by 64 pixel resolution LCD display that has very low power consumption and it's sunlight readable. By the way, if I go back to our code, there is this section saying that if the button 1 is being pressed, the LED 1 will be set to true, so to 1 for 1 second, and then it will be set to 0, to false. And LED 1 is actually a backlight for the LCD, so if I press the button 1, which is this button on the left tab, I will turn on the LCD backlight for 1 second. And if I flip the board around, you can see that they actually have 4 different buttons that we can use for our sketches. This is the actual microcontroller chip, a battery holder because the board could be also powered by the coin battery, but I'm currently using the USB cable to provide the power. And this might be actually a little bit confusing because the USB is only used for providing the power, there is no data coming in or out. And finally there are those female pin headers and they might look quite familiar because they are the same as on the Arduino Uno. Which means that you might be able to use Arduino Uno shields with this board as well. And that's pretty much it for the board. So let me actually show you how to show maybe more images but this time using the JavaScript. The important part is that this board could be only programmed using Bluetooth. So if you are like me using the desktop PC you have to actually buy the USB Bluetooth adapter in order to use this board. Again, the USB cable on this board is only used to provide the power. So once we have the board powered up, we want to jump to the Esperino IDE. And that's esperino.com slash IDE. The first thing you want to do here is to connect it to the board using this button and selecting web Bluetooth. And it will show you all the Bluetooth devices and the Pixel.js should be one of them. So I'll click the pair button and it should connect it to the board. Now, if you have never used the Pixel.js board before, there is a great video called Getting Started with Pixel.js. I will put the link down in the description. But what I will do is jump back to the IDE and create a new sketch, but this time being the JavaScript. And there is some example being already predefined, and you can see that it's doing something with the LED1, which is the backlight of the LCD. So if you upload it to RAM to the board, you will see the backlight of the LCD is blinking every half second. But I want to keep the backlight enabled all the time, so I'll get rid of most of the stuff except for the LED1 right on. And there is actually a problem because on is not defined, so on was probably a variable, so I'll change this to true or one and that should work. So again, send it to display and now I can see that the backlight is shining all the time. Now as for drawing the images, I will open the graphics library documentation and if I scroll down there should be a section about images and bitmaps and there is an example of the image being defined by individual pixels, so I'll copy this into our sketch. And then I want to draw this and for this I will use this graphics draw image function and that requires the image, the x and y position and some optional parameters like scaling and rotation which we will not be using. So in our sketch I will type in g draw image, use our image called emg and the position for example 10 and 10 pixels. Now if I send this to the board, nothing happens, I don't see any image on the display and that's because I also have to call the g flip function to flip the buffers and update the display. So now when I run it, I should see a small smiley face and you can see it's being displayed next to the Pixel.js logo. So if I want to only display the image itself, I can call g clear before drawing the picture and sending it now to the display, I should only see this small smiley face on my screen. Now setting image like this is probably fine for small icons, but for our full screen image it will be better to use some dedicated application and there is actually one, it's called image converter. So I'll choose my file, for example it's parking sensor and I can see the string for the image. I believe all the setting is as it should be, meaning that the colors should be only one bit being black and white and I want to output the image string. I can click the use compression to compress the data and make it much smaller. My guess is it will affect performance, but I don't care about performance that much at this point. So I'll copy the string into our sketch and use the same image variable but paste our data and I have to put semicolon after this. Then I will change the position to 0, 0 because this is a full screen image and upload it to display one more time. And after a few seconds, we should see a full screen image of the parking sensor being displayed on the display. Now at this point, I want to do two things. 
when I press one button, I want to toggle the LCD backlight, and when I press another button, I want to switch between few different images. Let's go back to the documentation, and you will see that as I scroll down, there is a lot of different tutorials. There is also the pinout, and a list of some shields that you can use together with the board. It also mentions that you have to call the G flip function in order to update the screen. Anyway, we are interested in buttons, so let's scroll down even a little bit more to find the button section. And there are some basic informations that you can use the digital read function to get the state of the button. But the better way is to use the setwatch function, which will only be called when you press the button. So I'll copy this example and paste it in our sketch, for example, down here. And I want to use this function to change the backlight of the LCD. And that could be done by setting the LED one write function. So let's create a new variable and call this backlight state and for now set it to true and use this backlight state inside the led one write function and then inside our function i don't want to put anything into console i don't want to print anything but i want to set the backlight state to be the inverse of the backlight state so when it's on it will be off and when it's off it will be on and then call the very same led write function and they should toggle backlight. Now the button that I will be using is the button one, that's the one on top left. And I think that everything else should be kept to default. So let's upload this to RAM. And now when I press the button, I should set the backlight to be off. And when I press it again, it will be on again. So I can use this button to toggle the LCD backlight. Now as for the second part, and that is switching the images, I will copy this setWatch function one more time, but this time I will not add a function inside this setWatch function, but rather I will call a different function, for example, I will call this draw image, and I will create this function up here, so I'll create a new function, being draw image, no parameters, just like that. One thing that I have to change is to change button 1 to button 2 instead, and then inside the draw function I want to of course clear the buffer, then draw the image, and flip the buffer. Again, I I don't want to draw this image all the time so i'll create a new variable and i will call this current image and set it to zero and once i draw this image i will increase it so current image is current image plus one and use the module function to keep it restrained so for now it will be module one i want to use this image converter utility to create strings for many images but i've already done this so i'll just copy it into my sketch so up here instead of having the image variable I will paste a few of the images that I've generated and I've also renamed those to have some meaningful names like image cube and so on and so on. So now for the actual drawing, I will create a new switch case and I will use this current image and if the image is zero, I will draw for example this image. If the image is one, I will draw another image, for example this one and I will continue like this with all the other images. I believe I have 10 of those. Actually, it's going from 0 to 10, so I have 11 of those, so I'll use the module 11. I will delete this preview draw image function from this draw image function. I mean, the names are kind of confusing, of course. But if I look at the code, you will notice that we have this draw image function that is being called when I press the button. But when I don't press the button, nothing is being drawn. So I will actually call this function in the beginning. So I'll just say draw image down here, and that will make sure that it will draw the first image before I press any button. And I think that's pretty much it, so let's try to upload it to the board, and you can see there's this small progress bar being being filled, and once it's uploaded, again you can use this button 1 to turn on and off the backlight, and you should be able to use the button 2 to switch between different images, which seems to be the case, so you can see those are the individual images that I've created and exported. And many of those are from my other projects using the Arduino Uno and all the displays. But you will also see some screenshots which I haven't finished yet. So that's just a sneak peek of what's going on and what I will be working on next. And that's pretty much it for today's project. I have to say that I really like this board and that's mainly because of the display because I like this place and this one is very big and very nice looking. It also has the resolution of 128 by 64 pixels which is the same resolution as I use for many of my other projects. And if you don't use the LCD backlight you can run it on the cell battery for a long time. Please let me know in the comment section if you would like to see more projects using this board. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.